Today we're going to look at overriding commands with RAD Image Editor. RAD Image Editor is part of the Tolerant RAD controls for Silverlight WPF Control Suite for .NET XAML development. So sometimes your business requirements may request that you do certain things when an image is saved. For example, you may want to add a watermark on the image before it is saved. In this video, we will show you how to override the default saved button functionality using commands. Let's go ahead and jump inside of Visual Studio 2010 and get started. So here we are, we're back inside of Visual Studio 2010. I'm going to go File, New Project. I'm going to be selecting Visual C Sharp Silverlight and then RAD Control Silverlight Application. I'm going to go ahead and give this the name of RAD Image Editor Override Commands TTV and press OK. We're going to be hosting the Silverlight application in a new website and I'm also going to be using Silverlight version 5. So once I hit OK here, I'm just going to scroll down just a tad and I'm going to place a check here on telerink.windows.controls.imageeditor. And you may notice that telerink.windows.controls.input and telerink.windows.controls has been automatically added for us. Let's go ahead and let's hit finish and Visual Studio 2010 will begin spinning up our Silverlight 5 project. Once everything is loaded, the first thing that I want to show you is that underneath references we have Telerik.windows.controls and Telerik.windows.controls.imageeditor and then finally Telerik.windows.controls.input and if we scroll up just a tad here you'll see the Telerik XML namespace has been added to the project automatically for us. So the very first thing that I'm going to want to do here is I'm going to want to add a class. So I'm going to right click add and then class and I'm just going to name this button my save command and then press add. Once that's in place our my save command is going to need to implement image editor command base. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to add my using statement for that and then I'm going to implement the abstract class. So before I add in uh, code here for my execute override, I'm going to go ahead and paste in a my save command constructor here. And I just hit control shift U to get rid of unneeded using statements as well as add in the using statements that was needed. So we have my save command with a rad image editor and this is set to the owner and then the base is just owner. Finally under the protected override void execute override I'm just going to simply have a message box that pops up here that displays my save command. Now that that's in place I'm going to switch back over to my main page.xaml and I'm just going to paste in two XML namespaces that I know I'm going to need. So the first one is tools which is mapped to telerik.windows.media.imaging.tools and then the second one is just our Telerik Windows Media Imaging which is going to map to telerik.windows.media.imaging. I'm going to add a fourth XML namespace here it's going to be mapping to our commands and that can be found in telerik.windows.media.imaging.imageeditorcommands.routedcommands. Now that that's in place, I'm just going to paste in a full copy of the style. Now you can get the style by using Expression Blend or some other tool that's very similar to that. And basically that style is going to define exactly how the RAD Image Editor UI looks like on the screen. So underneath our RAD image editor you can see we have Telerik RAD image editor. We're giving it a name, we're giving it a grid, and then we're also giving it this style of RAD image editor UI style 1. So we could find that style in this template here and inside of this you can see all the different various types of properties that's being set. But what we're really interested in is the save. So our save is located here. You can see by looking at the PNG image. And the command that's actually going to be set for the save command is going to be binding to this new save command. But we haven't yet put that into our code behind. 
So let's go ahead and let's go to our main page .xaml.cs and let's drop in that save command. So I'm going to create a private my save command and then that's going to be a lowercase new save command and then we have a public property here of my save command with a capital new save command and then we have our getter if the new save command is equal to null then new save command equals my save command this dot image editor UI dot image editor and then return it or we're going to be setting the new save command equal to our value. So let's go back up underneath our initialize component and we're just going to simply type in this dot image editor UI and we'll just set the data context to this. So if we go back and we run our application now then we can go ahead and we can load an image. We'll just load our test image here. But now when we hit the save command, our message box will appear. So we hit the save command and now our message box appeared. So like I said, this would be useful if there was other things that you may want to add inside of the save command before it actually saved the image. And you may want to add a watermark, for example. So again, thank you for watching, and please tune in to tv.telerik.com for more videos, and check out blogs.telerik.com for the latest news and announcements. Thank you.